Hey, welcome to episode 98 of the Hangar Z podcast, brought to you by Vertical Valor Magazine. In this episode, we piggyback off Vertical Magazine's article on ECHO's Public Safety Aviation Conference in San Diego. We got to sit down with ECHO HIMS Director Travis Mason and ECHO Marketing Director Ashley Chitty. During the conversation, we talk about what ECHO is as an organization, and most importantly, we preview their annual conference that's going to be held in my favorite city, San Diego. October 2nd through 4th, 2023. This year, they've added a law enforcement track to the training curriculum in addition to the other courses being offered that benefit anyone in public safety aviation, regardless of segment. In addition to the world-class training, the networking that takes place at the ECHO conference is something you don't want to miss. To register for the conference, go to ECHO's webpage, echoflightcrew.org, where you'll find a registration link as well as other info on the conference. The final day to book a room with the ECHO room rate is Friday, September 8th. Looking forward to catching you all Echo in San Diego. We would like to thank our sponsors, Metro Aviation, Shotover, and CNC Technologies. Cheers. Hey, welcome to Hangar Z Podcast. I'm your host, John Gray. With us today is the Echo folks here to talk about uh, the upcoming conference in San Diego. Anybody that listens to the podcast knows that we're big on conferences and and, uh, the education, training, and network that comes from those things. And Echo's conference is uh, honestly probably one of our favorite conferences that we've been to. We had an opportunity to go to Austin last year and spend time with you guys out there, and and it was it was really well put together. You guys, a lot of attention to detail, just a all around really really good conference. So we walked away from that like, man, how do we how do we continue to be involved with Echo and, and what you guys have have going on? And uh, lo and behold, this year the conference ends up in in San Diego, which of all cities is my favorite city. And I told you guys offline, I'm not a city guy, so. <laughs> kind of says a lot that uh, it's there. The the saying in San Diego is it's always sunny and sunny and seventy in San Diego, and it's true. So, for folks that are coming out to the conference from the East Coast, uh, you might have a, a a change in weather. You know, might be getting a little cold on the East Coast at that po- at that point, and you come to San Diego and it's still warm and sunny and and still summer like. So, excited to uh, to get into the, the conference with you guys and get a little preview of what to expect. With us today, we got Jeff. How you doing, Jeffrey? I'm well. How are you, buddy? Good. I know you just came off a seven day hitch, and uh, yeah, we had a little recording yesterday. And, and Jeff, you know, he's barely awake after being up for seven nights, and <laughs> I had a cold, so I'm on. I'm hopped up on on Dayquil, and uh, between the two of us, it was uh, it was an interesting recording. I'll say that. <laughs> so before we get into drink of the day, though, I'd like to to welcome uh, Travis and Ashley. How you doing, guys? Doing great. Thanks Very for well. having Thanks us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, for sure. Uh, drink of the day for us is just a kind of a f- fun conversation that I like to put into the episodes, and you know, it's we're always drinking something. When we're talking about aviation today. It's it's coffee for me, and something that's unique to to you guys, or at least from in my experience, uh, was Heroes Rise. Uh, when we went to Austin last year, Heroes Rise drove their their truck from their their facility it's in minnesota right that's correct they're up um in bemidji so actually not far from where i'm sitting right now <laughs> okay i will not so. will not tell you the exact location because my fishing secrets will stay fit uh secrets <laughs> <laughs> yeah but I'm, for those who've been listening <laughs> Ash, ashley's joining us from uh from the woods of minnesota actually I, I guess it's the waters of minnesota out there fishing so thanks for joining us for those that are, that are watching a video or that aren't watching a video she's got the pine trees behind her and i think there's a lake back there somewhere so that's really cool but back to heroes rise and we when we went to austin they had driven their truck from from uh, minnesota all the way to, to austin texas and get introduced to their coffee there so for my drink of the day today it's heroes rise coffee it's their their kenyan medium roast which is really good and the, the cool story behind heroes rise they or they have a, a public safety background and uh on the bag it's cool it says roasting for those that serve so they've got a heart for for public safety and and love that about them. So that's my drink of the day, Jeff. I'm sure you're still injecting yourself with caffeine. What do you got? I just uh, finished a cup of coffee. I don't. <laughs> I was already. I just woke up, so uh, don't mind me. And uh, <laughs> poured a cup of coffee before I came in here. And, and during our pre, you know, show talking, I I drank my coffee. So I might have to step out here in a little bit and go get some more. But it was just my regular okay. usual donut shop coffee. So I'm pretty boring, pretty easy. I might get a bottle of water or something later. We'll see. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Don't go crazy. Ashley, how about you? 
<laughs> I as well have Heroes Rise. Now, I know they've got their, their brick and mortar location is up there. Is there more than one brick and mortar location or do they have just primarily that one? Just that one. And then they have a uh, another truck, I believe, down in the Phoenix area. And this year okay. as well, they will be driving from Minnesota down to California to support us at the conference. So we're excited about that. So no stale uh, conference coffee for our attendees. <laughs> That's cool. I feel like they're, well, one, they're probably on the road now. They're getting a head start to make it to San Diego. They already That's started, yeah. <laughs> 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 But I think that's most people's complaint about some of the conferences is, especially when you're in class, there's there's no coffee available anywhere. After the first hour of the, of the conference, it's disappeared. And the coffee that is there is generally not very good. So for for you guys, not only is there coffee in the morning, but as the afternoon wears on, there's days where you've got a, a margarita bar that pops up and they're, they're serving margaritas to everyone that's in attendance. And what a cool experience that was. So I'm looking forward to, to that. Was there going to be something similar to that again this year? Absolutely. Yeah, we um we like to do that in the the afternoon of the first day when the wor- workshops are winding down. That's the first day all the exhibits and and vendor uh vendor spaces open. So that's a good way we feel to not only wind down at the end of the day, but to bring everybody in there and and get everybody excited about all the the sponsors and vendors. The other thing that's cool too is it's not just limited to drinks. There's food too. You guys provide breakfast in some days, and you know some conferences you're running because you're so you know short on time and you skip breakfast a lot of times because you just don't have time to get it you guys Mm -hmm. have solved that problem and you actually have food there can you talk about that a little bit yeah sure so we want to make sure that everybody is uh fully fed fully beveraged caffeinated and plenty of spirits in the afternoon so we we try and cover you from morning to night (laughs) of course that's all done on sponsorship dollars uh because that is really expensive to do uh however that's uh just something that we like to do for our attendees just to keep them happy and keep them going throughout the day. Yeah, that's, that's, that's huge. I love that. Now back to the drink of the day, Travis, what's your drink of the day? I might be the most boring uh, or basic depending on the way you look at it. Uh, but I have my Starbucks that I picked up <laughs> at nine o'clock this morning. Uh, in my time zone, it's almost one thirty in the afternoon and I'm still nursing it. So not a okay. whole lot of uh, creativity on this end either. <laughs> Well, at least you got something. Jeff showed up empty handed, or at least he drank his. Yeah. So you, you, you beat Jeff. That's okay. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us again. Really excited to, to join you guys in October at uh, Echo. And I keep saying October, and in my mind, it's a long ways away, but really, it's only a few weeks away, uh, yep. less than five for sure. So, again, excited to get into what people can expect at the conference. And before we get into the conference itself, can you guys just describe or can you introduce yourself and Talk, tell us what your role is with an Echo and, and what that looks like. I apologize if I'm cutting you all off. There's a little bit of delay, as you can expect, up in the northern woods of Minnesota. So I apologize if I'm stepping over anyone here. Um, so my name is Ashley. I'm a flight nurse out of Minnesota, and I'm a volunteer marketing director as well as a volunteer on our peer support team, the flight crew and assistant support team. Going back to a couple of things you brought up. One, you're, you're a volunteer. Everybody within Echo is a volunteer, and I really think that's cool. Uh, you guys are, uh, you know, super dedicated to not just the industry, but to the successful, you know, education and training that takes place at Echo. Echo is just a really cool organization. So thank you for all your volunteer time and for you know working to make our industry better than than we found it. So the other the other thing I want to talk about is is the fast team. Uh, the fast team has has been a huge part and been a huge resource for aviation folks. I'm I'm assuming worldwide now at this point. It seems like this year we've had more aviation incidents than ever. And I don't know if that's the case fact-wise, but it seems like that. It seems like almost every week there's something that's popping up on, on the radar as far as an incident uh, involving a fatality. You know, this last week we just lost the uh, Florida Sheriff's flight paramedic and, you know, how tragic was, was that. But you guys have stepped in and, and made yourself available as a peer support team, uh, no cost, all confidential. So love that and have to, to dig into that in an, another episode, but Thank you for your involvement there as well, Ashley. That's that's really cool. Yeah, I think the cool thing is is the uh, the motto is you know for flight crews by flight crews, and I think that really speaks to what they do. Is you know it's not an organization that's run by a bunch of uh, you know people that are on the payroll. You guys have a lot of buy in to the organization itself, and and I mean it speaks to it. These the conference, like John said, uh, Austin last year was just such a great event all the way around. And I, I've never been to a conference that's so inclusive 
of you know keeping everyone together throughout the day uh, and then into the evening for the social events and stuff you just really felt it felt like a tribe of you know people all together uh throughout the whole you know uh whatever three or four days that we were there and uh just mm-hmm. had a really good time and uh i think san diego is going to be even uh more fun than than last year in austin so it's it just speaks to really what you guys are doing and i know it hasn't always been that way but uh under your guys's leadership now it's it's the organization's just really great and try to get as many people uh that i know uh involved in it and, and out to the conferences so and and the law enforcement side too i know we're going to talk uh, about that further but you know there's there's some really exciting offerings this year on the law enforcement side of things and hopefully we can get uh some of our friends that are out there on the West Coast, especially seeing that uh, it looks like the East Coast is uh, rivaling uh, the numbers of law enforcement mm-hmm. folks that are going to be there. So I'd like to get those numbers up a little bit. Yeah. I'll, and I'll be honest, last year when we came, I wasn't sure from a law enforcement perspective how much carryover there was going to be in, in the presentations and stuff that we sat through. But I'll tell you what, I walked away from all the classes that took place there and there was a ton of carryover. You know, the, the courses that were taught and the topics that were discussed are discussion points that need to be talked about, whether you're in, in fire and in EMS or law enforcement or search and rescue. So, you know, safety is safety. And we've talked about that with the bell folks recently, but just a ton of carryover. And, and I encourage anybody in whatever segment of, of public safety aviation you're in to, to have a look and to join the conference, because the, like I said, the conversations and the training that's taking place here touches every segment of, of public safety aviation. But before we, continue down the path talking about the conference. Travis, can you introduce yourself and, and tell us what your role is within Echo? Yeah, sure. So my name is Travis Mason. I have been with Echo uh, total since the very first time that I ever started doing anything for uh, about five years now. Uh, first walked through the door as a future flight crew student looking to get my first set of wings and got mentored up went and became a flight medic and and from there uh, was brought back into the organization to help plan conferences. At this point, I am the HEMS director, so helicopter EMS director, and that is a loosely fitting title, which basically means that I oversee the conference planning um, schedule of events, speakers, things like that, and then pretty much the liaison between the organization and, and air medical programs. Okay, really cool. I thank you for for your dedication again. Uh, the, the program you developed you and Ash, well, the whole team has developed is, is just really impressive. You know, it's, it's been really cool for us to, to witness firsthand and uh, excited to, to again, join you guys in, in San Diego. Uh, you talked about sure. some of the, the speakers that are, that are coming up um, and we can jump ahead and talk about the keynote. Our friend Terry Mauchi is going to be in town and he's going to be the keynote speaker. What, what's that going to look like? So Terry, uh, yeah, Terry has spoken for us. This will be his second year in a row uh, presenting for us at Echo. Last year, he um, did a two-part lecture, uh, leadership-based style. Uh, And this year, uh, we wanted to bring him back to be the the main presenter, the the keynote that will welcome everybody to the conference. So it's going to be a leadership-style presentation. Again, I think there's probably few people that are as qualified as Terry to talk about uh, leadership in the Hmm. industry. Uh, And so his presentation is called Aviation Leadership Needs, Wants, and Frustrations. So I think um, the goal of, of this presentation is to meet people where they're at, talk about how to set expectations, how to achieve goals, and, and how to have better outcomes uh, in multiple facets from top down. We got to sit on the, the leadership panel last year, and he was one of the participants in that. And I've sat in a few other leadership courses he's taught, and I agree with you. He's, there's few people that are as qualified to talk on that subject as he is. Uh, very well spoken, just a great presenter. So I'm excited to to sit in on his keynote presentation. That'll be really cool. But going back to Echo overall, can you just talk about Echo as an organization? So like you had said, John, we're a 100% volunteer nonprofit organization. Uh, we just added to our volunteer peer support team. I think Echo as a whole, um, I didn't have a moment to count this morning, but I think we're just under 45 volunteers for the organization. And that goes from our future flight crew, our peer support team, the board of directors. We now thankfully have some um, AV volunteers as well. Um, We are just under 5,200 members nationwide. And we use the word membership because there isn't another word to replace them with. But we are a no fee membership. So we use the word membership just because we we have to put something online and uh, vet out those that are applying to join ECHO. 
Um, so 5,200 people nationwide. We are at 62 countries. For the conference, we have five different countries that will be represented. Yeah, no, I think it's, I think uh, some information we could add is that on those, um, you know, two or three dozen volunteers, you know, we're managing uh, a, a, a full conference every year, a future flight crew mentorship program. That's the biggest it's ever been uh, with a cohort of 20. Uh, we have the 24 seven peer support line. That's the fast team that'll also deploy within 24 hours if requested completely free to whoever's asking them to come out. Uh, we have the support dog program now that um, is available as well. Uh, and then we also have a couple other things such as the rotors for kids program. That's making a comeback in San Diego this year. And a couple other things actually helped me out if I've crossed over or missed anything. Uh, the safety program that we're just starting back up again. That's right. Yep. The safe echo has a, a safety team that has restarted this year with a lot of support uh, from every time zone in the country uh, to get together to talk about safety advocacy and and what we can do as an organization to lobby for better practices. That's awesome. A lot of topics to, to talk about in that particular one, but I'll focus on two real quick and then I'd like to get into the conference in San Diego. We talk about recruitment and retention quite a bit. And I love that you guys are working actively on the recruitment side. You know, a lot of these, a lot of the seeds of interest are, are planted for young kids when they see aircraft, you know, at a at an air show or, or something like that. So the, the Rotors for Kids program sounds really interesting. And then the, uh, what's the name of the program? The the Future Flight Crew. Yeah, the, the Future Flight Crew program. That's a really interesting program a cool way to recruit and develop uh, flight crew members, you know, as, as time goes on. So I love yep. that you guys are doing that. That's, that's really cool. I'd like to kind of hop into our conversation on, on San Diego. Can you talk about the conference as a whole? And then um, we'll, we'll dive into the San Diego side of it a little further, but what is kind of the goal for each conference that you guys host? So the, the one overarching goal that we have, no matter where we go or um, you know, what the topics are is that we want to build a cohesive, inclusive environment for networking, for learning, uh, and for people to have a good time. The main goal that we want to make sure that we always keep in mind is that it's accessible. A lot of public safety uh, employees, a lot of people that are flying as uh, medical crews and pilots and things like that, uh, not completely made of money. So if we can keep costs low and still provide uh, a world-class experience, then that's a successful event in our book. And I think Typically, when people consider Echo, I think HEMS is kind of where they kind of put Echo as far as an organization goes. But you guys have really opened up and you guys are inc- incorporating law enforcement this year as a big track in law enforcement, search and rescue and, and, the, and the fire world. Can you talk about your guys' progress and in, in, in bringing those other organizations or segments in? Yeah, sure. So in Florida, two years ago. Our host program, uh, which we try to accomplish every year when we go somewhere, is have somebody that's providing us a home, so to speak, uh, Lee County Sheriff's Office. And that was the first time that we had a law enforcement partner step up to uh, be our host. Uh, Before that, it was only air medical programs, essentially. Then last year in Austin, we had Travis County Starflight, which is a multi-mission program, uh, medevac, search and rescue, um, aid to law enforcement if needed, things like that. Uh, and then this year, um, we don't have a formal host program necessarily, uh, but we've worked closely with the San Diego Sheriff's Office with Tony. We have partners with San Diego Police uh, and then representation from other law enforcement agencies in the area, as well as a bunch of medevac uh, programs. So specific to this year, we have a dedicated search and rescue track and our friends with SR3 Rescue are putting on that entire track of classes, both workshops and uh, lecture sessions. And then Tactical Flying is a new partner of ours from this year, and they're putting on the TFO and law enforcement pilot uh, track of classes, two workshops and two uh, breakout lectures specifically from them. And when you add that into all the other leadership, safety and medical topics that we have, there's, uh, shoot, I can't remember the exact count now. I think we have almost 40 breakout sessions and 14 different workshops people can choose from. For one for one fee. Yeah, that's really cool. I I loved being able to go to these one or two hour breakout sessions, and you know spend time talking about a particular topic. That was really cool because sometimes you go to these you know multi day courses, and while they're great, you sometimes you know you you get uh, death by PowerPoint, and that wasn't what I experienced you know in any of the classes that I took when we went to your guys' uh, conference in in Austin. Awesome. And so, yeah, I love love how you guys are structuring that. 
really cool to have not only SR3, but tactical flying. You know, we love both of those, those companies and the, the training they offer. You know, both companies have super high quality uh, cadre. Every, everybody that, that teaches on, on either side has a lot of experience and a lot of insight into the industry. And so it'd be cool to bring, you know, those, those two companies into to offer the, the training that, that, uh, that they do. Uh, Jeff, any, any insight on, on any of that? Yeah, I thought, uh, last year, um, you know, it was really impressive was, and I, I think I've told this story before, but, uh, you know, Clay Lacey was there and Clay wasn't really sure how he was going to be received, you know, being that it was mostly medical crews and, and, uh, not his typical yep. audience of, uh, law enforcement, you know, guys. And, uh, he, we kept joking, uh, you know, he, he kept saying that it was just going to be John and I in the audience, you know, heckling him and nobody <laughs> else would be there. And, and, uh, <laughs> It ended up being standing room only in his, in his, uh, that room was too class, small for him um, where he was talking about. Yep. Yeah. It was very, yeah. And so, uh, I thought that was just really, uh, telling is that, you know, not only is Clay's information, you know, really, uh, expands beyond, you know, the law enforcement air crew stuff, even though it's a, you know, focused on, uh, law enforcement. And so I thought that was really cool. I thought it was very, um, telling of, the future of Echo is that, you know, not only are you going to have people participating, you know, uh, the, some of the information uh, crosses over those lines between, you know, law enforcement and HEMS uh, or other operations. So uh, I'm excited for to see how it, this expands this year. And hopefully we can get more uh, law enforcement air crews you know, involved in it because I think it's really just a worthwhile program. And if there's one conference that you can attend, um, you know, it's hard a lot of times too you know, agencies, we were talking about it before we came online, but, uh, you know, government agencies tend to, it, it takes a while to get things approved and get people to, uh, training events. Um, it's always probably one of the, the hardest, uh, parts of, of the, of being a government employee. That being said is sometimes like guys can't go to Florida for the, you know, the ALEA conference, uh, APSA conference, APSCON, like it was this year, hopefully with echo being on the the West coast, hopefully we can see, you know, the folks that can't make the, you know, trek all the way across the country. If this is more local to them, they can come to this conference and, and really get some worthwhile training and, and enjoy themselves. Um, I just think that bringing, you know, a lot of times organizations are very, you know, not, not really inclusive of everyone where this one is very inclusive of search and rescue, HEMS, law enforcement, and what a great way for people to you know, kind of network together, uh, and, you know, build those relationships rather than just everybody from one, you know, segment of the organ of, you know, aviation, all going to the same conference. You really get a lot more, I think out of, right. you know, bringing people from all these different groups together. So if you can make it to echo, I, I guarantee you, you'll, you'll have a, a great time and, and learn a lot. So, and a lot of, a lot of organizations, you know, including ones that I've been a part of, are, are guilty of only training one way or only training within their discipline or, or their, uh, what they know best. And, you know, one thing we're really proud of is that a flight medic can go to a law or TFO course and probably take away tactics and safety, uh, information that they might not have otherwise ever heard kind of staying within their bubble. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I love that. I heard a lot of comments like what you're saying, Travis come out of Clay's class, you know, and, uh, Clay is, gosh, what a great instructor he is. And so, uh, I know that with, uh, Nick and the training they're offering this year, there'll be a lot of carryover, but for our law enforcement folks in particular, you know, these, these classes, the street racing class by, for example, it, what a, what a cool class, you know, the, we had a chance to interview the San Jose guys, uh, in, in, uh, Orlando, what a cool program they have. And they've basically taken what they're doing there and, and turned this into a, a course and how to enforce street racing, type incidents and man, what a, what a great class kind of outside the box thinking. I think a lot of times in in law enforcement, we, we box ourselves into these, this is, I'm going to teach X, Y, and Z. And and that's the only courses we go to. So it's cool to see something outside the box come from uh, Nick Minx's organization, tactical flying offline. We were talking about registration numbers and, and, you know, where we're seeing uh, people register from. And uh, it looks like California is being beat out. (laughs) <laughs> by East Coast attendees right now, so um, yeah, just calling bit. out of our, all of our uh, <laughs> calling out our, our California friends. You know, this is this is a an event you don't want to miss. 
and I'm not not saying that casually. I 100 mean it. So yeah, let's 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 show up and force. Clay Lace talks about Southern California being the the Disneyland of of police helicopters, and so we gotta we gotta represent. Uh, hope you guys can show up and uh, and make a, sh- a showing out here in, in San Diego. Do you guys have any any points on the registration numbers you want to touch on? You know, Jeff had mentioned we're we're bringing Echo to the West Coast here. Um, this is the first time we've had a conference. Um, on the west coast we went to like you had mentioned austin last year before that we hadn't gone west of what have we been saying travis we haven't gone west of the mississippi uh before austin um but this conference is the highest Mm -hmm. numbers we've ever seen so you know we we had a little bit of a risk going as far west as we did and we didn't go west we went to the southern west right and our numbers are the highest we've ever had for a conference but like you had said we have just as many people from florida as we do from california as of this morning so like you said step it up california (laughs) <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. And just for those that don't um, know, you know, it's well, Echo was East Coast Helicopter Operations, and then it became it now it's Every Coast Helicopter Operations. So you guys have really expanded, uh, you know, your reach, and so I think that's probably part of the the reason. But yeah, we need to we need to uh, show out in San Diego, truly make it the uh, it's now truly the Every Coast Helicopter Operations, and. That includes, you know, all the segments. So let's bring it. Yeah. Uh, I was just going to mention quickly, uh, Jeff had said that you won't find, you won't find any other conference that's as affordable. And so I just wanted to save some people some time if they think, oh, you know, it's a a conference, it's still going to be too expensive. For the main conference, it's only $170. And like you had touched on, um, that includes your meals every day. We're going to provide breakfast, lunch, and dinner almost every day with the social events. And for the law enforcement uh, two-day courses, it's only two hundred fifty dollars. So, just wanted to throw that out you out there and yeah. save people time looking for the prices. So, it is a very affordable conference, and yeah. like Travis mentioned, we're able to do that because of our supporters, sponsorships, and the fact that we're all volunteer. So, yeah, that's that's huge. What a what an affordable conference, and it's uh, you know such a high quality conference too. On top of that, so started to get into San Diego. How did you guys select San Diego as this year's venue? And can we kind of talk about that? So, uh, late last year, after we got you home from Austin, Ashley and I promised ourselves, <laughs> Ashley and I promised ourselves a couple of, uh, restful weeks before we geared up to plan the next year. Well, that turned into less than 12 hours later after we had both landed at home, <laughs> we were already on the phone talking about where we're going. So, uh, we looked at several different destinations, uh, in the Pacific time zone. Uh, San Diego was always our, our hope. It was our go-to. I would think we put in, uh, I think somewhere between 12 and 15 different RFPs to venues, uh, for San Diego. Uh, just for backup planning, we looked at, I think two or three venues in Seattle. I'm trying to think of where else we looked at. Uh, it wasn't very many places cause we kind of had our hearts set on San Diego. Uh, and that really in large part just came from the comments like Clay made about the Disneyland or, or playground for heli- you know, police helicopters, uh, knowing that, uh, we had local contacts, uh, through you guys, through SR threes, Tony Weber, uh, and some others just, we thought that we would be successful if we went to San Diego. Not only that, but like you said, San Diego is 70 and sunny year round. We can pretty much count on uh, pretty weather and not being disrupted by uh, a major storm. Although uh, Hurricane Hillary was a little bit of uh, an anomaly, as I understand it. Um, <laughs> yeah. However, uh, I'll reserve my comments. But either way, <laughs> we should have very nice weather come October. Uh, but there's tons yeah. to do around. Yeah. I mean, the resort yeah. itself is great. It's on Mich- It's in Mission Bay. Uh, it's kind of its own little island area. Everything's walkable. Everybody's staying in their own cabana. There's restaurants and bars on the property, but then there's also beaches on the property. And a short uh, Uber ride away, you're in Pacific Beach, you're in La Jolla, you're in Coronado, uh, Gas Lamp District. I mean, there's there's so much to do if, if uh, you get bored in the afternoon, which we hope to prevent. Uh, or if you want to come early and stay late, ton, tons of reasons to do that as well. Yeah. It's oddly enough, gosh, probably about five years ago, my in-laws, they have, they have jet skis and we took them out on, on mission Bay and, uh, we went, we wound up at the paradise point resort and spa. There's a, no kidding. a little bar called the, the barefoot bar and grill. Yep. It's right off there. And there's a, a courtesy dock that you can pull your jet ski up or your boat and, That's and right. tie up there and, so we had a lot of fun there. It's you know didn't didn't realize that you know five years later or so I'd be going to that same place for a conference. Isn't that nuts? But man, what a cool spot! Like you said, it's yeah, it's it's a little island, you know, 
off of Peninsula in Mission Bay. Um, mm-hmm. Like you said, there's just a ton of stuff to do there. Uh, driving distance or you know, driving distance to Gas Lamp. You've got the Pacific Beach right there with the boardwalk. Uh, not too far is Old Town San Diego, uh, which is also really cool. Within uh, the downtown San Diego area, you got the Gas Lamp District, which I already referred to, but you've got Little Italy and all these really cool um, little sub communities down there. And of course, you got Petco Park where the Padres, Padres are playing. Although right. I doubt they'll be playing in October this year. Sorry for our Padre fans that are <laughs> that are listening. <laughs> you know, plus you got the you got the zoo, you got the San Diego Zoo, you've got the Wild Animal Park, which isn't you know too far away. So if folks are bringing their families. Uh, you know, there's tons of stuff. Yeah. The the USS Midway Museum is really cool down on the harbor. You know, there's yeah. a ton of stuff for the families to check out too. If if you know people are going to be bringing their wives and kids and stuff like that with them for people to go out and and you know do outside of the the activities for the conference, it's San Diego is probably one of the best places to do that for sure. Yeah, I I love that city. Yeah, there's there's yeah. A, a ton of stuff to do there. It's we talked about some of the training that's taken place. Can you? Kind of touch on some of the panels. We referenced the leadership panel that, that took place last year. There was a safety panel last year. Can you talk about the panels and what that looks like? <clears throat> we'll have two this year. Uh, we'll have the the air medical panel, as we're calling it. Previous years, we've called it the critical care panel. But we are uh, just going to call it the air medical panel this year so that we can incorporate other topics other than just the medicine, because again, we have such a wide variety of attendees. We just want uh, to be beneficial for everyone, no matter what industry they're in. Always something to learn. Um, I'll be the moderator for that panel, uh, and we'll have uh, different people uh, sitting from leadership positions as well as um, medical director positions and things like that. So that'll be on Tuesday. That'll be right after lunch uh, at one o'clock. And then on Wednesday, uh, we're going to do a little bit of an uh, award ceremony right in the morning to kick off and get started. And then the aviation safety panel is coming up right after that. Coincidentally, uh, that'll be hosted by by you, John, uh, for the Hangar Z podcast. We're going to do it like a live audience, a 400-person audience podcast. Uh, and that's going to be uh, not only moderated by you guys, but sponsored by Airbus. And on that panel um, will be RJ Garland uh, from... Uh, the incident that happened in Huntington Beach will be a speaker of ours, but also talking about safety topics. Uh, we'll have a, a safety officer from Air Methods, Tony Weber from uh, San Diego Sheriff, and then Dave Callen and Rob Monday from SR3. They're both uh, rescue and pilot instructors with them. Yeah, what a what a lineup. Yeah, that's, that's going to be a blast. And uh, thanks for allowing us to moderate that. And that'll be a fun episode for us to, to air. So we'll have to pair up with your IT folks and figure out how to make that happen. But it's going to be awesome. Uh, so really look forward to that. The last thing I want to touch on, and this is a, one of the most important parts for every conference is the networking. One of the interesting parts about your guys' uh, conference is, is how you guys do the networking. I feel like at a lot of conferences you go and and after the, the day's events, everyone kind of goes their own direction. And there's, you know, little breakout parties that happen here and there that are hosted by different companies, but you guys have done something entirely different. Um, and Travis, maybe I'll hand it over to you now to talk about your guys' model and, and what you guys do for the networking side of things. Yeah. So uh, I know we kind of touched on it a little bit in the beginning by having that first happy hour on on the first day to bring everybody into the vendor hall and and make sure that all of our partners are getting good exposure. Um, but that's just uh, kind of the very first kickoff for any of the social and networking events. I know a lot of conferences and big events, they'll let uh, the big sponsors and supporters uh, go off and do their own parties. And those are fun. Uh, I've been to plenty of them and always have a great time. They always really outdo themselves with the entertainment and, and what they can provide. However, we we find it to be a lot more valuable if, if we kind of discourage that uh, in favor of keeping everyone together uh, and organizations that want to contribute to those those single big events uh, we really encourage that that definitely helps us offset the cost and we can give them tons of advertising credit for it uh, however we we emphasize the the networking and the ability to to keep everyone together uh, the tribe that you mentioned Jeff is is really important to us uh, so for Monday uh, Monday is our we call it the helicopter happy hour so that's going to be our fly-in event. We'll have a couple aircraft that are going to come in and land and show and tell. And uh, unfortunately, they won't be able to partake in the spirits, uh, but they'll get some good food. And they'll be there as a, a backdrop and as a feature of the event. Uh, we'll have on Monday what bands 
uh, with members from San Diego Police. They play in the band called Role Models. Uh, they'll be playing for us that evening, and that'll be out on the uh, at the pavilion that overlooks the bay. So that'll be a really nice nice area for that event. On Tuesday, uh, after we wind down after the breakouts, we'll give people a break to go and freshen up and everything. And then on the adjacent terrace uh, that actually backs up to the barefoot, uh, I'm sorry, barefoot bar <laughs> that you were talking about. We'll have a band there called Bay Birds. They uh, have a pretty good following in San Diego. I'm realizing as I continue to follow them on social media, but we've booked them for the night. So we're going to have that, some food trucks, an open bar. Uh, and that'll just be a big night of uh, fellowship and, and hanging out and, and winding down. Uh, and then we've uh, actually contracted with the resort to keep Barefoot Bar open uh, after we wind down and keep that open till midnight for us. So for the people that have the stamina, they can keep going until midnight with us. Uh, <laughs> so that'll be nice. <laughs> and then on Wednesday, uh, that's the last day of the conference. Uh, we'll close out with our uh, closing remarks at five o'clock and then we'll be done officially, unofficially. We're not really having a, a programmed event, but we're going to guide everyone to the main pool at the resort. It's a heated, very large heated pool with a, a bar and uh, some food options and we're not going to have anything that we expect people to go to because a lot of people are catching flights. Uh, but that's where we'll be if people want to hang out uh, and we can keep the party going for one last night. Yeah, that was fun last year. Everyone yeah. wound up at the the pool and yeah, yeah. just a, a kind of a cool opportunity to, to close things out. Um, and I will say for, for those that are traveling to San Diego, if you have not been there, it's a very travel friendly city. Uh, the airport's really convenient. It's really easy to get in and out of. Uh, Uber, Lyft, all those all those ride options are very accessible, not only from the airport but uh, at the at the venue itself at Paradise Point. Pretty much anywhere in San Diego, if you need a, an Uber or a Lyft, they're accessible. Um, and they're I think we're only ten from minutes from part. the airport. Yeah, super close. The Mission Bay area, there's there's walking trails that surround the whole bay. Bike rentals, you can run run the bay. You can ride the bay if you want to rent a bike or, or you have For access sure. to a bike. Um, it's just a, it's an awesome place to be. If you take your bikes, Tony Weber and I had actually talked about doing some, some beach cruising from paradise point up to uh, PB. And of course there's, there's a bunch of, oh, cool. of bars that you can hit along the way. Uh, so that if, if we find some time, we want to, to do that, that'd be a lot of fun, but there's just so much to do in, in that area. Uh, so combine that venue with the training that you guys are offering. It's just going to be, it's going to be an awesome experience. So really excited. Absolutely. And, yeah. uh, yeah. Before we close out, do you guys have any any last points you'd like to bring up on the the conference and the venue? I think what I'll close out with is just that uh, this is our first time on the West Coast uh, organizing an event from my uh, seat in Central Virginia. Uh, and San Diego has been a little bit of a, a challenge, but it's been worthwhile because uh, this is going to be our best one yet. Yeah, I wholeheartedly believe that for sure. Jeff, any, any closing remarks? I'll just echo... Uh, you know, what I said earlier is that if there's one conference that no, you can no attend, pun intended. yeah, <laughs> uh, is go to the echo conference. It's, um, it's, it's a great time and the opportunities to, to network with other organizations outside of, you know, the airborne law enforcement community are all going to be there. Uh, you know, the, the, uh, vendor floor I think is, was wonderful last year. I mean, so many different vendors, uh, and you know, their products, uh, were there. And I, I just, I can't speak highly enough of the conferences and not, not just because Travis and Ashley are sitting in front of us. I've said it multiple times before. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, if there was one conference I could go to a year, it would be, it would definitely be the echo conference for sure. So looking forward to it. Uh, love what you guys do for the, for the organization as a whole. Um, and we, Thank you for allowing us to be a part of it uh, with the pod. Yeah, we're going to have a, a booth set up with Vertical in, inside the conference. We did some podcasts from in there uh, last year at the, at the conference. SR3 came over and took our booth over, which we didn't find out about until later, which was which was pretty funny. But <laughs> uh, we expect similar antics. <laughs> yeah, they even put a dog up on one of our seats, put a headset in the dog. <laughs> it That's was pretty amazing. awesome. <laughs> but... Um, but Travis, I know we talked about the sponsors and and you know the, the things that you guys offer only happen because of you know the money and time they contribute to the, the success of Echo. Can you talk about the some of the sponsors that are that are making this all happen this year? Yeah, absolutely. So 
<clears throat> longtime supporters of Echo uh, continue to come back and continue to support the mission. And none of this would be possible without them. Among our biggest are Leonardo helicopters and air methods year over year. They uh, absolutely blow it out of the water and, and really impress us with what they're able to do to keep the support going. Big ones that we have too, Airbus, um, they sponsor the safety panel that you guys will be moderating uh, as well as uh, the band that's playing at Helicopter Happy Hour, Metro Aviation, uh, supporter of Echo as well. Uh, they're sponsoring the band for Tuesday night, the Bay Birds one I mentioned earlier, uh, as well as our critical care education track. Uh, Future Flight Crew picked up several supporters this year, uh, namely PHI Air Medical in Hamilton. And then new this year with Terry, not not only with Terry being our keynote speaker, but with them being a supporter of of Echo as well as Bell Helicopters come in uh, as a as a major supporter. Can't uh, forget to mention SR3 Rescue for the Search and Rescue Track. Rescue Company One for their uh, big educational component. Vertical Magazine uh, coming in as our media sponsor, and then Tactical Flying coming in for all the law enforcement education as well. Yeah, that's awesome. All, all that is going to contribute to make a, an epic event in San Diego. So really Absolutely. excited to, to join you guys out there and uh, have some cocktails and to get some education and, and training in our belts. Uh, so again, look forward to seeing y'all. And uh, until then, cheers. Cheers.